you for joining us, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Welcome to our Thursday morning prayer breakfast. My brother Antonio is going to bring the word of God to you today. And I know you are going to have such a wonderful inspiration like never before. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you because of Antonio. And I pray that you speak to him so that he speaks to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. So I will welcome also worship team to lead us in one song and then Antonio will pick up from there. Amen. take this opportunity to thank the church leadership for the opportunity they have given me to, bring, to be the one to bring the word, the word of God this morning to us. And we are taking the word of God from the book of Philippians chapter, chapter 1 verse 20 to 23. And I read, I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now as always Christ will be exalted in my body whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. For I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is, far, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. I would like to start with a brief history of the, of the book of Philippians. And to start by saying that this, the, the book was written by Paul while he was in prison in Rome. And this, the church of Philip, Paul established it on his second missionary trip as, as recorded in Acts of Apostles chapter 16, the entire chapter. And this section of scriptures I've read, Paul is expressing his desire to glorify God in life and, and in death. And today our topic is the believer's life. And in order to, to, to get a better understanding of this topic, I would like to start with a question, to pose a question to us all. And the question is, what am I living for? Or rather, what is your purpose in life? The answer to this question will also determine the direction of your life. So if your purpose, so if your purpose is wrong, it means that your direction is wrong. And if your purpose is vague, so it also means that your direction is vague. And if you do not know your purpose at all, it means that you'll be carried along by the currents of our head, just doing what seems to, get, to make you happy. But from the above passage of scriptures, we see, Paul, we, we see Paul stating his own purpose in life, or rather the reason as to why he was living. And when we read in verse 21, 
The Bible says that it, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. So we have started by asking what is your purpose in life? The correct answer to this, to this question must also give some consideration to the facts of death and what lies beyond. It also must give some consideration of the uncertainties of life, so that even when death comes, your purpose will not be thwarted. Now we see in the above passage, the apostle was clear and focused on his purpose. And I believe this is the purpose. I believe this purpose is the purpose for which it is, it is the only purpose which good keeps into account eternity. And I believe, so whether Paul lived or whether he lived long or his life was terminated in the prison, if his purpose was fulfilled. And this was, the, this was his purpose, that for me to live is Christ. One Martin Lloyd Jones said in com commenting about this statement, and I will quote, that this sentence is not only a statement of the Apostle's true experience, but also is a standard of judgment which confronts us with the most thorough test of our Christian faith we will ever encounter. Every person who professes faith in Christ must grapple with the question, I can, can, I, can I honestly say, for me to live is Christ? If I can say yes, then I have also answered the, that fundamental question about death and what lies beyond. Because death will be gain to me. For me to live is Christ. If for me to live is Christ, then for me to die is gain. Now to bring, now to bring this purpose into focus, we need to answer two questions. One of the questions is, what does it mean to live Christ? And the second question, how do we live Christ? First, to live Christ means to live in union with him in order that we may, he, may become our, he may become our whole in all. In the verse in chapter, chapter 1 of the same book of Philippians, the letter is addressed to saints in Christ who are in Philippi. So the concept of in Christ is very vital for us to understand in what Christ, who a Christian is. When one, is truly, when one truly believes in Jesus Christ as Savior, he is instantly joined to Christ and he becomes a member of his body where Christ is the head, that is the church. So to be in Christ means that what is true to our belief, what is true to Christ, what is true to Christ is true also of our believer. As Apostle Paul right, put, puts it in Romans chapter 6, verse 10 to 11. In talking of Christ, he says that, that the day that he died, he died to sins once and for all. And the life that he now lives, he lives unto God. Likewise, verse 11 says, likewise you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. While this is our true standing before God, we must grow in our experience of the truth of this reality, so that in our daily life we live in communion with God. We live in fellowship with Him, depending on Him in everything that we do. It means to grow to know Christ intimately, according to Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. It means to grow to love Christ with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind and strength, according to Mark chapter 12, verse 30. It means to grow to experience Christ as my whole in all, according to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, verse 21. Sorry. It means submitting all my emotions, all my thoughts and actions and words to the Lordship of Christ and seeking to please Him alone, according to Colossians. Of course, this, this experience of living Christ is not, an, is not instantaneous, but it is a process. It is what we call growing in sanctification. And it will never be fully realized in this life. So that we, we see Paul putting it in Philippians chapter 3 verse 12, that I have, not that I have already attained all, or I'm already perfect, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ has also laid hold of me. Even the best Christian, they, they struggle with the temptations to sin. And when we read in Romans chapter 7, we see an example of a, of a Christian who is struggling with the sin. So struggling with sin is a, is a, is a, is a good sign that you are, you are born again. It is a good sign that you are, on, you are walking on the narrow road. So a believer's life, so that we say that a believer's life is not a perfect life, it, it is not determined by the perfect, perfectness of the life he lives in, but the direction he is taking. As you have said that the, the purpose of your life will determine the direction which will take in life. To live Christ also means to live to exalt Christ. In verse 20 of the, of the above chapter, of Philippians chapter 1 verse 20, 
The Bible says, I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage, so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. In verse 20 is another way, we can say it is another way of stating the great goal of the Christian life, which is to glorify God in everything we do and in what we have. To glorify God in the common language means to make God look good as he is truly is. To the eyes of the unbelieving world, Christ is like a distant star, which, 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 which is dim in the night. But though he is the brightest, he is the brightest even more than the sun itself. He is the splendor of God, the brightness of his God. Yet the world, the unbelieving world, does not see him like that. So it is so the believer. So the believer is like a telescope through which to bring the truth about Christ into view of the unbelievers. Through us and especially how and especially how we handle trials, Christ is magnified to a spectacle and believe in world. Looking at Paul's circumstances in chapter in verse 20, we see that it is evident that the main focus of Paul was not to be released from prison, but that to, for Christ to be magnified, to be exalted. Whether he lived on or died, that, that was not the issue. What mattered to him was that Christ was exalted. Now we, we can pause at that and ask ourselves, what matters to you? What is that? Is it your repetition? Or is it for God to be glorified? So Christ, when we, notice, when we read also in verse 20, we realize that Christ is glorified in the body. So it, this is a comprehensive and practical concept. It means either we exalt Christ, or we bring shame to his name by our behavior, by our attitude and our words. So I may ask, how do you use your eyes? How do you use your ears and your tongue and your feet and your hands? Do you use your body for purity or for sensuality? Do you, do you, do you dress not to be seductive or to exalt Christ? So to live Christ, it means to exalt Christ in everything we do. The third, to live Christ means to die to self in order to serve others for the sake of Christ. In, in verse 23, that Paul had a strong desire to depart and to be with Christ, but still he realized that the Christian church needed his ministry, and so Paul was willing to, lay, to deny his desire so that he may serve the people of God for Jesus' sake. Of course, the final decision whether he lived or died was, is, was the Lord's, but still he was willing to live in fruitful service if that pleased the Lord. And like many today, who, think, who, have, who have embraced the notion that Christ is, is there to serve them. But a believer, a true Christian, knows that Christ has saved us so that we may serve him. We see people come into church. If the, the church does not, meet their, does not meet their needs, they leave and go elsewhere. We see people who are just, who have come to Christianity, thinking that Christ is coming to supply all their carnal and human desires. The scripture says that delight yourself in God and will give you the desires of your heart. That doesn't mean that we give the desires you had before you were converted, but it means that he will, plant in, in, he will plant in you his own desires, the desires which glorifies God. So to live Christ, so to live Christ, it means to live in union with him, so that he, he is my whole in home, to live, in Christ, to live to exalt him in everything we do, and to die to serve in order to serve Christ and to serve men in a God-glorifying manner. So from that we can define, we can now get a simple definition of what is a believer's life. Christ is the believer's life. We can use this a symbol and say Christ is the believer's life. For Paul says, for me to live is Christ. Paul is not living for anything else but Christ, to see Christ being glorified. And that is what the believer's life means. The moment one was converted, you, there was a change of dispositions, there was a change of manner of living. Before one is converted, it's a love of self. But after the conversion by the work of God in their heart, he begins to love God and to that there's a change of there's a change of disposition and that the, he begins to have a love for God, which grows with with time. So that we go now to the second part. How do we live Christ? We have answered that we have already answered that question in the above passage in what we have already said. But I can give some points on the same, that we make it by making hate our constant hate. To, to live Christ was the sole purpose, or rather the sole aim of Paul. And we, as, it, he, as he states it elsewhere slightly in a different term, but in the same thing. 
when we read in First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 23, the scripture says, I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessing. What is Paul talking about? He says, verse 19, he says, I have made myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. When we turn to Philippians chapter 3, verse 7, verse 7, the Bible says, But whatever we are against to me, I, I now consider Lord for the sake of Christ. So everything which Paul considered, which were again to him, he now considers them laws for the sake of Christ. When you read in Philippians chapter 3, verse 14, 13 to 14, the Bible says, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have, yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. It is a continuous, that we, we, are, we are making it a constant hate. It is a, it is a, it is a move in the, in the heart. It is a move, something which, that moved Paul. So Christ was his constant hate. As Christians, we need to examine ourselves constantly in light of this aim. It is easy to fall into living for the, the good things, but not for the best. God has graciously blessed us with families, possessions, friends, careers, etc., etc. But if we are not careful, these things can become the things we live for. We need to constantly ask ourselves, if there's good, if there's good things you are taken away from me, of course, it would be difficult if like, like job I lost, or my children, or my health and wealth. But if I am truly living for Christ, I will be able to come through any, any tragedy with, without despair, because it cannot be taken from me. So I must constantly evaluate my life by asking, is Christ at the center? Is he my all in all? The second way to live Christ, it means prayer, by through prayer and the provision of the Spirit. When we, not, we notice it, when we read, we see Paul in verse 19, just the verse 19, the Bible says, Yes, I, and I will continue to rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of, of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. So we see, we understand that Paul was a man of prayer. But also he asked others to support him in prayer. We see, we, may not, we, may, we tend to think that Paul was, was naturally bold. But we see also because, praying for people, praying, asking people to pray for him so that he may boldly declare the word of God. So to live Christ, we need, we need, to, be, we need to be prayerful. Second, to live Christ, we need the, pro, the provision of the Spirit of God. It is impossible to live the Christian life by our, by the, by our own strength. So we need to rely daily on, on, on the Spirit of God for strength to help us to live a Christian life, to help us to pursue godliness and holiness, to help us to pursue, to be, to, to grow in order to, for Christ to become my, our whole in whole. I want us to note that Paul to go on living and dying was not a choice between the lesser of two evils. He did not consider life as a difficult trial to be endured, with death being a difficult thing as well. Rather, he viewed life as a progressive joy with Christ and death as even greater joy because he would see, see him face to face and be with him for eternity. So a Christian has the best of both worlds. Even if he suffers now, we have Christ to comfort and to encourage and to strengthen us. And if Christ is real to our souls, what more do we need? Or rather, what more do we want if Christ is real to our soul? At the instant a Christian dies, we are present with the Lord for our eternity, freed from all sin, pain, and death. Yes, it is a sad thing for those left behind. It is a sad thing for those left behind. We miss our loved ones, one, the one who have gone to be with the Lord. But we have the promise of God according to First Thessalonians chapter four, verse fourteen to seventeen. That we, the promise of God concerning the resurrection that we shall be with Him. If those who have gone to be with the Lord, they will come first. And then the, because God has raised Christ from the dead, he will also bring with, with Christ those who have slept in him. If we have sought to leave Christ, then dying will be gain. Because we will, never, because we will be with him, we can't lose. Back to our first question. What am I living for? Rather, what are you living for? The Bible says, for me to live is Christ. And as to us, I want to pose this question. For me to live is, let me leave a question mark. Is it money? Is it success? Is it happiness? Is it pleasure? Is it fun? Is it family or good times? If your answer is any of the above, then, you, then dying will be a terrible thing, but not gain. 
But if with Paul you can boldly, honestly say as you evaluate your life in the light of the word of God, for me to live is Christ, then you can also say with the confidence of God's word behind you, to die is gain. From that we understand the believer's life is a life that exalts Christ. It's a life that is lived for others. It's a life that is lived, die, which is about dying to serve in order to live for other, to serve others for Christ's sake. And it's a life of union with Christ. Pray that God may help us, that God may, grant, may, may strengthen us, may fill us with the knowledge of his will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That Lord may help us to live a life worthy of the Lord. That Lord may help us even as deers pant for streams of waters that may pant for rain, that may pant for holiness and righteousness. May God bless you and I know my dear brother, my dear sister, you've been blessed. If you are there and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, why wait? I want you to say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you this morning. I receive you as my personal Savior. Wash me with your blood. Make me a new being. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you have said that prayer, you are now born again. Look for any Bible-believing church. If you are within Machakos, please join us here in Osos Cathedral. And you are welcome to join us every Sunday during our services at 9 to 10. And also every other weekday, we have a busy prayer breakfast and Wednesday healing service both uh, physically here in the church and also through this forum. God will continue to bless you. I ask you to keep supporting the work of God and our pay bill number is 582297. 582297. So wherever you are and you want to support God's work here in also Cathedral and also Machakos Diocese at lunch, send that and God will bless you. Father, as they sent, I ask for a special anointing and financial growth like never before. In Jesus' name, Amen. Have a wonderful day.